Hello everyone and this is Vibhul Buroit and you are watching my YouTube channel. My dear friends, I welcome you for the third part of Organometallic Compounds. Alright, in the first part I explained you what is Organometallic Compounds all about, the technical definition of that and the classification of Organometallic Compounds. In the second part, we started with the synthesis or preparation of Organometallic Compounds where I explained you the first method and that was Oxidative Addition Method or we also call it as direct reaction of the metals. In oxidative addition method, all right, I first of all took an example of alkali metal, all right, alkali metal reacting with an alkyl halide or an aryl halide resulting in the formation of an organometallic compound, right. So it means that there is an increase in the oxidation number or oxidation state of alkali metal by one and therefore we call it as a one electron oxidative addition method. Okay. Also, I gave an example of alkaline earth metal. Also, I gave an example with respect to zinc. Okay. So, they were being converted into the corresponding organometallic compounds. One of the best example when we use magnesium was Grignard reagent. All right. So, in that case, what happened was alkaline earth metal has an oxidation state of 2. Okay, plus 2 when it is going to be in the combined state. Whereas in, in the isolated state, the charge on alkaline earth metal is 0. So in that case, what happens is, there is an increase in the oxidation number by 2 and therefore we call it as well 2 electron oxidative addition method. Alright, so that was about the first method of preparation and that is what I explained to you. Okay, in the second part. Okay, of the organometallic compounds. And if you have missed out, my dear friends, no worries at all. You will find the link of the part two in the description box of this particular video. All right. So, in this particular video, now what are we going to discuss? Oh yes, the preparation method still continues because, as I told you all earlier, that there are total going to be five methods of preparation. So we have done with the first one. Now we go into the second one, and that is we talk about metal metal exchange reaction. Metal, metal, exchange, reaction or we also call it as transmetallation. Now first of all is, I'll explain you the general reaction and then I'll give you some explanation and then followed by some examples. Alright, so the general reaction my dear friends is, we are going to have our organometallic compound that is RM. As I already told you my dear friends, in the second part of the video when I started with the preparation methods that there are two ways in which we are going to prepare organometallic compounds. Number one is all together we are going to prepare organometallic compounds. So that means it's not there in the reactants. Okay, it comes up in the products. So that was the first method my dear friends which I discussed in the previous part of the video and that was about the oxidative addition method. Also, I told you that there is a second method also of preparation and that is what we already have an organometallic compound and from that we are going to prepare another organometallic compound. So that is the second criteria that is going to fit up over here. So we already have an organometallic compound that is RM. Now what we do is we treat this RM with M dash. Now see what is going to happen is by simple uh, bond breaking reactions in the bond formation so that you know you understand the products which are going to be formed before I actually write it down and that is my dear friends what we do is this bond breaks between R and M breaks okay and then what happens is that M loses out so I just show an outward arrow okay and M dash forms a bond with R alright so this is enough I guess to predict the product before I have written that Okay, and if you can do that prediction perfectly, so that means my job is done and that is to make you understand how the reactions take place. Alright, so that means what we have is R M dash. Okay, and plus what we have M. You understand this? So what exactly is happening now in this particular reaction? That is what we need to focus over here. Okay, because I've used here M and M dash. I haven't changed the alphabet, my dear friends. So that means both of them are metals. But then at the same time, I've written a single dash. So it is very clear indication that both of them, though are metals, but they are different metals. All right. So now what should be the criteria for this reaction to take place? So see what is happening is, what is M dash doing when it is going to come in contact with RM? And that is, it is putting in all its energy to break the bond between R and M. Okay, it's knocking off the M. Okay, and it is taking its position. 
So for doing all these things, breaking the bond, for knocking it out, you require what? Energy. Alright? So that means M dash has got more energy as compared to that of M. Okay, it's much more stronger as compared to that of M. So the most important requirement, my dear friends, is, and that is, with respect to the position. Okay, the position of M dash. Okay, in the electrochemical series, or we also call it as EMF series, must be what? Higher than M. Okay, the position of M dash in the electrochemical series or electromotive force series should be what higher than what M. So it means what? It's a clear indication that higher the position in the electrochemical series, okay, greater the reactivity and greater the energy. All right. So M dash has got a greater energy. It has got a greater reactivity as compared to M, and it is because of that particular higher energy it is able to break the bond between the R and M, knock off the M, and take its position and give you a new organometallic compound, and that is R M dash. So we already have, my dear friends, one organometallic compound from which we are going to prepare another organometallic compound. This is what is the synthesis part. So in analogy, we can also say that this is a displacement reaction. Okay, we can also call it as what? A displacement reaction where M dash displaces M. Okay, a mightier person displaces the weaker person. Okay, so same thing over here is a more stronger M dash is going to displace what? The weaker M. Okay, so in analogy, I will also call this reaction as what? A displacement reaction. All right, so this is my dear friends how the reaction takes place. Now I'll give you some examples so that you understand this concept very well. Now generally, there are many organometallic compounds that comes under this particular category, but most of, one of the most common ones, okay, and that is going to be the organometallic compounds which involves what? Mercury. Okay, because the simple reason is the bonding between the carbon of the R group okay and the mercury is going to be weaker okay and if the bond is going to be weaker so it's very common sense that the another electropositive metal which is more electropositive than mercury because as i said in my previous video also that mercury is considered to be what less electropositive compared to inverted commas please okay compared to the other metals such as alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals and zinc and aluminium and so on all right, so the bond between the C and Hg breaks very easily. The another electropositive metal can easily displace mercury and it can take its position. Am I clear with this? So here we go with some of the examples involving organometallic compound with respect to what? Mercury. So we have CS3 twice Hg. I'm going to treat this with sodium. So as a result of which, what am I going to get is CS3 Na. M plus Hg. Alright, this is what we are going to get. So, just a simple balancing of the reaction. So, it is going to give you 2 CS3, this is going to be 2 Na. Alright, next is dimethyl mercury when treated with, say, magnesium, it results in the formation of CS3 twice. Mg and plus Hg. Similarly, we have CS3 twice mercury plus zinc. We will be getting CS3 twice zinc plus mercury. CS3 twice Hg plus aluminium, which is also quite electropositive. So it is going to give you the CS3 twice, sorry, this is CS3 thrice because aluminium valency is 3. So we are going to use it as well. So the reaction balancing part will be 3 CS3 twice. So this is going to give you 2. This is going to be 2 AL. Okay, and this is going to be what? 3 HG. Okay, similarly, if I'm going to take an example with respect to tin, that is SN. Okay, we have CS3. 
for SAN because here we are going to talk about stanic, stannous and stanic. Stannous is plus 2, stanic is plus 4. Okay, and it gives you what? Hg. So it is giving me 2 CSC twice Hg. So this is going to be 2 Hg. Okay, and we have here the same bar, and that is going to be CS3 4 SAN plus 2 Hg. So this is what we are going to get. So the reactions are with sodium, with magnesium, with zinc, with aluminium, and with respect to tin. Okay, that is SA. So these are the different types of reactions that we get. Everywhere you can see the sodium, magnesium, zinc, aluminium, and tin are going to be more electropositive as compared to mercury. So what they are going to do is they are going to break the bond between the methyl carbon and the mercury, and you are going to knock off the magnesium out. Okay, and see this the knocked off magnesium. I'm oh, sorry, knocked off mercury, and as a result of which, what happens is it's very simple, and that is you get a new organo metallic compound. So everywhere you can check it out, mercury being less electropositive as compared to that of sodium. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, and tin, it gets knocked off. Alright, now the last point which I want to say over here, and that is mercury is considered to be kind of heavier, and heavier substance always settles down. So the mercury which is going to be formed over here is going to settle down and we can reuse it. Alright, so that means we can treat it once again with a methyl group, okay, so that, you know, there is an addition reaction taking place, you remember that, the first method, oxidative addition method, yes, okay, where we are going to take it with respect to uh, another alkyl group, and you get a alkyl uh, mercury, and this alkyl mercury will be once again treated with the various electropositive metals to give you the other type of organometallic compounds. Alright, so this is my dear friends about transmetallation or we can also call it as metal-metal displacement reactions also or metal-metal exchange reactions as well. I hope you have understood this very well.